If your Joomla installation was successful, then there's nothing to see here. Move on to Lesson 5. If, however, you had trouble with the installation, you might find this helpful. The main problem I encounter is with a file called configuration.php. This file contains various information your site needs to operate, and it's usually created at the end of the installation. However, if the web installer is reporting that this file is unwritable, then it will not get created, and you'd normally have to create this file yourself. Beginners may find this process daunting, so I'll show you how to get around this problem shortly. One other issue that some have reported to me is that configuration.php was showing as yes, but wasn't actually created at the end of the installation. There's a way to fix that too, which I explain in the second half of this lesson. So let's look at the first problem. To get configuration.php showing as yes in the web installer, we're going to create an empty file, upload it to the web server, and change its permissions. Start by opening a plain text editor. It's best to use a very basic editor rather than a word processor, otherwise the file might not be created properly. For example, in Windows, you're best to use Notepad. Don't type anything, but save this empty file in the same directory where you previously extracted all your Joomla files. Name the file configuration.php and if you have the option to change the file type, make sure you select the most basic type. In my case, I'll change this to all files. You might notice that there's a similarly named file configuration.php-dist. Just ignore that one, although I will mention its purpose in the second half of this lesson. Now upload that file to your web hosting account. Open your FTP software, connect to your account and upload the file. Lastly, you need to make this file writable. On the server side, right click the configuration.php file name and look for an option such as change permissions. This version of FileZilla calls it file permissions. Select that and a new window will appear with a box somewhere displaying a number. Change the number to 777, click OK and then go back to your web browser and work through the installation steps as explained in Lesson 4e. There's one more step that you absolutely must complete. When Joomla has been successfully installed, you must go back to your FTP software and then change the permission on this file again. The process is the same. Right click on configuration.php, choose file permissions, and this time change the number to 644 and click OK. If everything has worked, you can stop watching this video. There is one more problem to consider, although this one's rarer. I've had some people tell me that they've done the above, but configuration.php is still not created. The Joomla installer will display some code for you to create a configuration.php file manually. However, if this somehow doesn't work for you, here's how to get around it. The file I mentioned earlier, configuration.php-dist is a partially complete configuration.php file, but as it's easy to mess this up, it's recommended that you only use this when necessary. Start by opening configuration.php-dist from the location where you originally extracted your Joomla files. If you open it in Notepad, The data may look a little messy, and therefore be difficult to work with, in which case choose something more sophisticated. I'll open it using WordPad. Now scroll to the Database Configuration section. 
the first setting to examine starts with VAR dollar sign host. It should already contain local host. And if this is the database location your host has provided for you, leave this as is. If not, overwrite local host with your database location. Make sure this location is inside the single quotes. Next is the database username that you created earlier. Type this inside the single quotes. Then do the same with your database password. And then your actual database name. That's enough to get you going as everything else can be changed from Joomla's back end once it's working. There is one more setting that you might like to change as well. Under the server settings, change this code to a random selection of alphanumeric characters. Now, save this file, naming it configuration PHP. That is, get rid of the dash dist part and .txt if your editor adds that. Go back to your FTP software. Upload your newly created configuration.php file. and then go back to your browser and see if your site displays. Well, there's two problems that occurred during the installation and I hope that this has helped you out.